This year, I have been working on my JavaScript slash TypeScript skills, and I learned about different JavaScript frameworks like React, Next, or Vue, right? So I want to learn a bit more Next and want to create a Next.js app, but I'll be using ChatGPT to help me create that. So let's see how easy it is to build a web app now with ChatGPT coming into the play. So I'm gonna give it a prompt and I'm using the GPT-4 model here, as you can see on the top. Okay, so the prompt that I gave is that I'm creating a web app that has an input field on the home page, And in that input field, we are accepting a prompt for ChatGPT itself. So, you know, we'll be using OpenAI's API here and it will explain any of the concept that you type into the input field as an 11 year old. So basically the input field will act as, you know, this chat prompt as we have on the ChatGPT website. And then it'll use OpenAI's API to respond to whatever we type in that input field. So let's say we say explain load balancing, right? And it would try to explain it as if it, it was explaining it to an 11 year old. So let's see what it comes out with and we'll try to build it. So as you can see, it's generating the answer now. So we'll be using npx create next app and then your this will give us project directory with all the boilerplate next code and then we will navigate to the project directory we'll install axios which i guess will handle our api calls and then we'll also create env.local with where we'll store our secrets and here is our api.js in the lib folder to handle to handle api calls for chat gpt and then we also create a new page component in index.js where we'll be, you know, designing that home page. So it's almost done with the prompt. Let's go ahead and start creating our next app based on these instructions. So I named it chatgpt next app. So none of the prompts. So, so in the instructions, it didn't include what to pick on, on the prompts that the npx create command gave us. So I'm just going to go with the, go with some assumptions because I know it's using .js extensions for a file like api.js. I'm going to say no for TypeScript. And then would you like to use ESLint? Yes. Um, I didn't see Tailwind CSS in the instructions that ChatGPT gave us. So I'm going to go with no. Would you like to use the source directory? The default is yes, so I'm gonna go with yes. Use app router again, yes is recommended. So let's go with that. And then would you like to customize the default import alias? I'm gonna go with no. So now it's generating that boilerplate code for our next app. So I have changed my directory to that app folder. And as you can see on the right hand side, these are the files that were generated. So let's go back and do npm install Axios. And this will install the Axios library for us. And then we have to create .env.local file in which we'll have our OpenAI API key. So I'm gonna copy this, go back to my VS code, create a new file called dot env dot local make sure it's in the directory and not outside so paste the environment variable here and then i'm gonna paste my openai api key in this file which i'm gonna take off screen because i don't want to expose my api key okay so i have stored my openai api key now let's create api.js in the lib folder to handle the api call to chat gpt so i'm just gonna click copy code here and I'm gonna go back and we see that there is no lib directory in our project. So I'm gonna go ahead and create lib directory here. And then the file that we wanna create here is api.js as per the instructions. And I'm gonna paste the code that we got. So just going over the code, basically it takes the environment variable that we stored locally, goes to this URL using Axios to do a API request. And also you can see the prompt. So the prompt it uses is explain the following concept like I am 11 years old. And then it uses the variable prompt, which 
I'm guessing we'll be picking up from the input field, which we'll have on the home page. Pretty interesting. So, so far it looks good. Like the API.js file looks good. So I'm going to save this and go back to my chat GPT window. And then it also wants me to create a new page in the pages folder called index.js. So let's copy the code here and go back. So I also don't see any pages directory. So I'm going to go ahead and create it pages. And then I'm going to create an index.js and then I'm just going to paste the contents of the file. So I can already see that um, there is some, there are some H1 elements. There is an input field, which is stored in prompt which we saw in api.js right here. That's how it'll go along with our complete prompt, right? And then we are just returning that component on our index.js page. So the next thing that it says is to start your development server by doing npm run dev. So let's do that. npm run dev. Okay, so we have a web server running on localhost 3000. Let's go and navigate to that localhost 3000. Okay, conflicting app and page file found pages index.js and source app page.js. So since I picked to use source directory, remember there was a prompt uh, in our terminal when we were creating a next app. So it's asking to please remove one to continue. So we could also copy this error code and ask GPT to see, hey, I'm getting this error. How should I proceed? Let's see what it answers. But the next error was pretty you know, instructional. So we would have to remove either the pages or the source um, app.page.js file. Okay. So ChatGPT says, it appears that you have two conflicting files in your project, the pages slash index.js and source dash app slash page.js. The error occurs because Next.js only allows one of them to define the root homepage route. Makes sense. So we'll remove the page.js from our source slash app directory. So let's go ahead and do that. So you can either do that in the terminal or I'm just going to go into my source directory Inside app, I'm just gonna go delete page.js. Okay, let's go back and restart our dev server. So npm run dev. Let's go back to our localhost port 3000 in our browser and see if it works. So there we go. We have, this is our localhost 3000 port. And let's enter, you know, a technical concept like load balancing. And I'll zoom in so that you can see. And I'll click on explain. Okay, there we go. There is a request fail error with status code 404. Did we get any errors in our terminal? No. So let's ask ChatGPT that, hey, if we were able to load the home page. When I click on explain, it's giving a 404 error. Okay, so it's saying there's something wrong with the a non-existing page. To fix this issue, you can update the form in index.js file to prevent the default form submission behavior. Here's the updated handle submit function in the index.js file. Let's go back and look at index.js and see how it's handling the response. So here's the handle submit function, right? So the API.js only gives us the response data that we get from OpenAI. Right, so it's asking us to change the handle submit function. So let's go ahead and do that. And it also says, make sure you have this line, event prevent default in your handle submit function. This will prevent the function form submission behavior and should eliminate the 404 error. If you still experience the issue, check the browser console for any errors or warnings that can help you identify the potential problem in your code. Let's do that before we change this. So I'm gonna go to localhost. Let's go ahead and do inspect, go into our console. And you can see it's failed to load resources. This server responded with the status. And so it's not the page I think that's giving us the error. It's the OpenAI's API call that gave us an error. You didn't provide an API key. You need to provide your API key in the authorization header using 
bitter odd. So this is what we need. So I'm going to copy this instead now. So it's a good thing that it said to check your console, right? And I'm going to zoom in so that you can read the error message. Okay. I'm just going to copy it till here and go back to our chat GPT window. So the 404 error is because of open AI API I'm seeing. Okay. So I said the, the 404 error is because of the open AI API. I'm seeing this error in the console and then the error message. Okay. So it says, looks like the API key is not being passed right successfully. So it's asking me to make sure that I have .env .local file, And then I have also the next public open AI API key as the environment variable in there along with my API key and in the lib.api.js make sure I'm using the correct name for the environment variable. So let's go ahead and do that. Let's double check. So we have next public, so next underscore public underscore open AI underscore API underscore key. And if we go back to environment.local, I'm just gonna make sure we have the same environment variable. So I double check the environment variable is fine. And it also gave us the entire API.js file just to make sure that we copied it correctly, right? So we have the const API key that is processing this environment variable, which I double checked is fine. We have the headers, we are the authorization. So I'll make sure this looks okay. So I'm gonna copy this, go back here and I'm gonna paste it. Looks it's okay. And also is the URL okay? So let's check that. OpenAI v1 engines DaVinci codex completion. So restart your development. So let's restart our development server and see if that helped it. Feels like everything was right in the first place, but I'm gonna try it anyways. So let's do click on explain and we still get a 404. Okay, so we are still getting the error um, and from the looks of, you know, to the extent that chat GPT could explain, everything is looking good. So I do know that there's an open AI library and I'm wondering why I didn't chat GPT use that. So I'm gonna ask it why we didn't use. So I'm gonna ask it why we didn't use the open AI library that's available through NPM. Okay. So what it says is the open AI NPM library is convenient way to interact with OpenAI API Node.js applications. However, the example I provided earlier uses XCS library for making HTTP requests directly to the OpenAI API, which can be more straightforward when working with Next.js web application. The main advantage of using OpenAI library is that it provides a more abstracted, higher level interface for interacting with API, handling things like authentication and points automatically. However, XCS is more general purpose library for making HTTP requests and can be used with any API, not just OpenAI's. If you prefer to use OpenAI NPM library, you can follow these steps. Great, I'm gonna use that. So let's go ahead and NPM install OpenAI. I'm gonna close the dev server for now and do NPM install OpenAI. And then it changed a few things in our API.js file. So it is using OpenAI instead of Axios now. Let's copy that. This code replaces Axios with the OpenAI library for making requests to the ChatGPT API. The rest of the code should be same. Using the OpenAI NPM library can simplify your code and make it easier to work with. Both Axios and the OpenAI library are valid choices which is correct. So I'm going to go ahead and paste the code in our API.js library. We got rid of the entire code that we previously had. So we are still using API key. We are still using the same environment variable name, which is good, which was thoughtful of chat GPT to keep that in mind. Um, let's run NPM run dev again and go back to localhost 3000. Okay, so the error we are getting now is that the OpenAI is not a constructor right here. Again, I'm just gonna copy it and test chat GPT what it says. I'm getting an error message. So I told it I'm getting an error message when I run the dev server. Okay, so it gave us a solution. It looks like the OpenAI package is exporting an object rather than a constructor function. To fix this, you can modify the import statement in API.js to import the create function directly instead of the default export. They should allow us to use OpenAI function in the same way as before, but without the error message. Let's, let's try it out. I don't think that's gonna work, but let's see.
Yep. So it says the open AI is defined multiple times. And I think it's because what chat GPT missed is the case right here. So I'm just going to copy this and paste it here to see if that will do the trick. Okay, so I asked it, I'm getting an error message when I run the dev server about, you know, OpenAI is not a constructor. So it said, my apologies for the confusion. The issue you're encountering is because the OpenAI library is designed for Node.js backend environments and not browser environments, which Next.js targets by default for client-side rendering. The error is caused by incompatibility when trying to use the OpenAI library on the client side. To resolve the issue, to resolve the issue, you can create an API route in your Next.js app to handle the communication with OpenAI API. This approach will run the API request on the server side and avoid the compatibility issues. So we'll be following this, these steps to set up an API route in our next app. So create a new folder called API inside the pages folder. Inside the API folder, we create a new file called chatgpt.js and the following code to chatgpt.js. Okay. And then we also update our environment.local because it changed the name, it seems like, for our um, OpenAI's API key environment variable. And then we also replace the api.js, the file that we were working with currently. And then we just restart our development server. So let's go ahead and do that. I'm gonna go into my VS code. I'm gonna go into the pages directory and create API. And then I think it said create chatgpt.js. Okay, so in our API, I'm gonna create a file called chatgpt.js. And then I'm gonna paste the code that chatgpt gave us and save it. And then we also update our api.js in the lib directory. So I'm gonna go here and now, because we had delete this and paste the chat GPT, what chat GPT gave us. And I'll change the environment variable name here. I think it's called next underscore public underscore open AI API key. Let me just quickly double check that. Okay, so everything looks good. Let's do, let's start our dev server. Okay, so our dev server has started. Let's go to our local host. 3000 and we can see that it's loading the page up the home page so let's try load balancing again okay so request failed with a status code of 500 so instead of 404 now we are getting a http error code of 500 let's see what it says so it is referring to the same thing that the open ai is not a constructor so we are still getting the same error message and we can ask ChatGPT again that, hey, you know, I'm still getting the same error message. I am still getting message. Okay, so it says, apologies for the confusion earlier. It appears that the OpenAI library is still being bundled with your client side code. To completely avoid the issue, let's use utilize Next.js API routes. Remove the OpenAI package if it's installed as we won't be using it in this solution. And then we are going back to Axios. This is, this is getting crazy a little bit. Okay, so it just basically is giving us, again, the XCS route, but by creating a new file that we created called chatgpt.js. And so we are back to using Axios instead of the OpenAI library. I'm gonna try this solution, and if it doesn't work, I'm gonna end this video. And we'll come up with a part two because, you know, I don't wanna make this a long video, but, it is a bit tricky to work with ChatGPT. And please let me know in the comments if my prompts were wrong. Um, I am trying to get better with my prompt engineering, but let's see, let's, let's try this last solution and see if it helps us. So I did npm uninstall OpenAI. The next thing is to update our chatgpt.js, which is under the pages slash API directory. Yes, we created that, so pages, slash API and then chat gpt.js. So now we are using Axios and I'm gonna name, rename this to next underscore public API key, save it, go back. We won't perform this step because we are referring to the old environment variable name and update our api.js to this. So I just updated my api.js 
hit save and then do npm run dev. I think that's that was all the instructions. Yes, there we go. So let's see if it works now. Go to our local host 3000 and let's type load balancing again. Okay, so we are back to error code 5000 again. Internal server error. Let's check our terminal to see what happened. Oh, gave us no error messages. So let's try that again. Load balancing. Quest failed with status code 500. Why is it not giving us any error messages? Okay, I'm gonna call this video. Um, you know, it was fun learning Next.js, but we couldn't get the app to run. I'm gonna make a part two where we'll keep troubleshooting and find what the issue is. But the idea was that we create an app that takes an input as a prompt and explains a technical term to a 11 year old. And this was all being built in Next. So yeah, if you're interested in part two, make sure you're subscribed to the channel so that you're notified when it's uploaded. This was fun, but we'll, we'll see if we can figure it out in the part two.